video looks like to this unit. Wireless video is very, very noisy on the band. It just eats up. If this wireless video camera was over in my neighbor's house with his Wi-Fi operating where his Wi-Fi is operating, there is a good chance that you would not be able to use any kind of wireless networking at his house. You would not be able to talk to his access point. And it's simply because this is just eating up so much of that resource, just completely annihilating any hope of getting through. I'm going to go ahead and unplug that, though, so that that goes away, and you can see that traveling through. Now, I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter than what I had intended to originally. I've been fighting with Cam Studio and recording with the Channelizer software. Um, this recording actually looks to be the first one that's gone well. So I'm probably going to go ahead and run with it, and I'm going to cut it shorter because I ran out of time to do it proper. But I will go ahead and uh, go back over a little bit more about what it's really doing. So we're going to come back to, to what is going on, and then maybe show you a, a couple of the menu items, and uh, then I'm going to have to be going to have to to end the segment. Uh, so it is shorter than what I would have liked, but just because of time constraints. Uh, I need to get this in so it can actually be put into the final rendering for the for the new episode of, of BSOD that's coming out. Uh, the new episode should be out within the next three days, and Fox needs to have some time to edit the final video. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get this ready for him. But uh, I'll go ahead and show you some of the menus. So under Channelizer, you can get into Preferences. You can take an online survey that I've never taken. You can bring up the About screen that we had up earlier. Um, under view you can open a recording now that's an interesting thing because in order to open a recording you have to create a recording and all you're doing when you create a recording is you are writing to a file what you are seeing here this information is being written to a file you can play that file back at any time later by just going file open recording so we'll create a new recording real quick and I am going to name that recording my recording WSR Yes, I wish to replace the old one that I, I did for a previous take. And now we're recording that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the camera here real quick. We're going to do a five-second burst of this camera. So there comes up on our five-second mark. And then I'm going to let it go for five seconds with the camera off. Then I'm going to plug the camera back in. Get another five seconds with the camera. Then I'm going to unplug again. And then I'm going to do that one more time. So we have a very distinctive pattern over here on this side that we're going to follow. Oops, I started up a little late. We'll go ahead and start it now, though. So I have two five-second bursts with a five-second separation, and then another five-second burst with a ten-second separation between these two. So it'll be really obvious whenever we uh, go to look at this recording that that is what we saw. So now I'm going to stop the recording. End recording. And now I'm going to play it back. So open the recording, my recording.wsr. And here you can see the progress bar of playing back that recording. And here is all the data we captured during the recording. So we'll just go ahead and watch it here for a little bit. There's where we turned on the video camera for five seconds. You can see that. And then turned it off. So we are still following that pattern there. And then we turned it back on. And we'll just let that run for a little bit longer. And there is our last running of the video camera. So as you can see, we did definitely record it. We are playing it back in the time, according to the time in which it happened. And standard playback controls for any kind of a movie player applies here. We can jump to the end, we can fast forward, we can play, we can pause, we can jump back, we can jump back to the beginning. Uh, there are things like along those lines. This tells us when this was recorded and this here tells us how far into the into the recording we are currently. So that mark there is 48 seconds into that recording. I'll go ahead and close that recording because uh, uh, we don't really need it anymore. But you could see from that recording that we did indeed have that pattern that I put in there of five seconds on, five seconds off, five seconds on, ten seconds off, five seconds on for the wireless video. Now under the view we can control what graphs we see 
we can do the same thing with these marks here, the, these arrows that are in the corner of the graph's label. Uh, we can also change this down here. We can change it so instead of showing Wi-Fi channels, we show frequencies. We can do the same thing down here, back to Wi-Fi. And we can also show the Zigbee channels. I don't know anybody that has Zigbee. I don't have access to any Zigbee stuff. I've never seen any Zigbee stuff in my uh, spectrum analyzing of anything. Uh, at least if I did, I didn't know I was looking at it. In my area, Zigbee's really not popular, so um, I never really used that particular label. I almost am always using the Wi-Fi label because anytime I'm using this thing, it's generally related to Wi-Fi, wi trying to track down problems or trying to put in new equipment. Uh, also, you can clear out the views. I can clear the planar view, which is this graph down here. This graph kept all its data, but the planar view down here was reset. Uh, I can also clear everything, so it's like I'm starting over. Uh, do I wish to clear? Yes, I do. So it clears the history and clears the planar view. They don't give you an option of just clearing the history, but to be honest, I don't know why you ever would want to. Um, if you if if you want to keep this but clear that, I I don't I, I can't think of a real scenario in which that would need to be something you'd want to do. So. Well, this is the Channelizer software. This is version 2.0. This Go is for the Y-Spy hardware. And it is available at metageek.net. If you buy a Y-Spy, I highly recommend that the first thing you do is go download the updated software from them. The version of the software that came with mine was rather old and just absolutely horrible. They've made massive improvements here. So I would definitely recommend that you download the new software and run it instead. Um, there is also software available for Linux and for the Mac. I believe they link to both, but they do not offer it. A third party has written each. Um, if you've ever heard of software called Kismet, which is a Linux war driving software, uh, the guy that writes Kismet also wrote a, a YSpy utility. I do not know the name of it, but he wrote a YSpy utility for use on under Linux. And the other day in some random browsing, I actually came across a Mac OS X application for the Y-Spy. I do not remember the name of it, but I will try to track it down for the show notes. Uh, and uh, you probably you can come on IRC and ask me, and I can track it down that way. Or it may be linked on MetaGeek's website. It's been a while since I went looking at their website. So um, this has been Channelizer for the Y-Spy. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. If there is any other questions you have towards this software or towards the Y-Spy dongle itself, feel free to track me down on IRC. Um, I use the uh, nickname Ophidian, and I'm usually hanging out in the BSOD channel of irc.bsodtv.com. Thank you for watching.